Father, we thank you for your word, God. Father, I thank you, Lord, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation come, Father, in the knowledge of you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I think of something. Thank you, Lord. Today's message is called Breaking Mindsets and Releasing Strongholds. And make sure it's said like that. Breaking mindsets and releasing strongholds. And it's funny, Elaine didn't know. Everyone probably thought we were done with this. But I actually, before she even preached, I was already getting stuff about it. And I released it in the text, which was confirmation. Um, confirmation. And yeah, so God has shown me some things in this. Because everybody has some or a lot or and everybody's always wondering you know how do we do it and when do we do it and mindsets are formed from past experiences thought processes that stunt your growth so that's what God told me strongholds are set up from past failures for protection so you have strongholds, like, and you put yourself in those, and sometimes there are strongholds. Everyone said the enemy has a stronghold on. No, you are holding on to something so strong and not letting it go. It's a stronghold. You have it strong because we have the power to become the sons of God, and we have the freedom in Christ. And the power of the gospel and the blood of Jesus breaks us free of everything. And then mindsets... So, well, in strongholds, we set up and through protection. So, when we're like a little child, we're innocent. And people take advantage of innocence and stuff. So, walking in this world and, walk, and then in religion and in, um, you know, um, charismatic witchcraft and different things, we begin to do things and we, that's why... The worst is people coming out of a lot of religion. And then the other is strongholds that we all come in when we come to Christ. Nobody is born again when they're born. So, and the problem with children that grow up in the church, they got a lot of strongholds from false teachings. And, you know, like Baptist or whatever it might be of, of how the Holy Spirit is or not. And, what is not God and what isn't God? What if it's they've been told a lie, a lie, a lie? Even Hitler had wisdom to say, if you keep telling people a lie, something like that, so many times it'll become truth to them. So how do we break strongholds is by the Word of God and the truth. He says, this is my Word like a hammer. And we're going to get in to see how that, and every week that's why it's good to come and get get the hammer, but not the not. The wrong hammer won't break nothing. It'll set things in that aren't of God. So we put up walls of protection. So let's say you're, this stuff has happened to you. You're going to make sure it doesn't happen to you. So in that, you resist the right people in your life. You resist the wrong word in your life or the right teaching because you set up these thoughts and things to protect you because... You're never going to be poor again. Or you're never going to be um, hurt again. Or you're never going to be, I'm never going to struggle in that area again. I'm not going to, so fear sets in and makes us set up our own barriers, our own borders, and our own, and we, we, we put ourselves in our own boxes. That's why I picked that song about, let like, God break, break us free. And when others have been set free, they're able to set others free in that area. And the problem with formulas and all those things, they only work so far. They can get you so far, but they can't get you to have the mind of Christ. They can't get you in the freedom. Kind of like we were, God was showing me this about that that wasn't even spoken, just to use an example, not to go back there, but about frugality. And God says, if you're frugal with yourself, how are you going to be extravagant to other people? Because we love ourselves first, right? So the same way you're going to treat yourself, it's going to be the way you're going to treat other people. And Jesus said, give it all. Give, if they take your cloak, give them your whole wardrobe. 
<laughs> How are you going to give away your whole wardrobe when you won't even... You see, God just showed me that after all that. So it's like, these things are wise things to do, but we cannot be trapped in our own way of thinking in our own way of living because when we're trapped in our own thinking our own way of living there's only so far we can go for God and we end up shutting down the kingdom of God in our life not to say go out and do crazy things but as God takes us from glory to glory and faith to faith and truth to truth we're being set free to have to, to walk in the kingdom and have this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus that's with everything that's not just with the frugal thing I mean the the, the things that he was talking about right there the love and the peace and the he said, let this mind be think as he thinks. Walk as he walks. So, at the same time, we had to understand that the only way to, that to be done is by a renewing of the mind. So in the Old Testament, there are strong places where it was a place where the enemy had territory. The enemy would set up a stronghold to stop you from getting... It's, it's, it's a fort. It's a fortress to stop you from getting... And that's what the enemy does with... Our thoughts, our emotions, and the things in our life to stop us from getting the freedom and the victory that Jesus paid for us to have. That's why people are saying like, oh, uh, who the Son sets free is free to you. You're really free, but are you living it? Right. Have you really, is your mind really free? Because you are free. And then that's why it says give no place to the devil because you're giving a place and you're letting him to set up a place, a foothold or some kind of thing in your life. So in, in, in the sense of the scripture, and, and then so you see a little kid growing up, and then comes into some other, you know, into the traditions or religion, whatever we're on, we're, we're constantly hearing this, and, and traditions, you know, that's what was the hardest thing for the Jewish community to get, was to break their traditions, because they did them their whole life. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus comes, teacher among all teachers, the Word made flesh, and He's telling them, your traditions are stopping you from receiving the kingdom of God. Not that your traditions were evil or bad because they came from God, but they're stopping you. He said that your traditions make the gospel ineffective, powerless. So our mindsets and our thinking also shut down the kingdom and the gospel. And then, so God sends people and other people around you that can help us to be broken free, but when we resist it and we know everything, or what is the biggest thing that's up is pride. Because we're not that doesn't go with our thinking, so it cannot be right. Because and we've been taken advantage of so much, and there's so many false teachers, so we end up shutting everything down, and then we end up meditating on something that God keeps making us, but then we end up putting ourselves under confusion. So the renewing has to happen by the real Word of God and by the real brethren of God and the real body of Christ. Praise God. Praise God. So in 2 Corinthians, and then what's this? What The most thing is to know our identity is to know who identifies us. So knowing our identif identity knows, so what? We're created in His image, right? So when we know our true identity, and, and, and it says it's no longer I that live but Christ, so, but he cannot live past our strongholds and our mindsets. We can't look like Christ if we have our, our it's mindsets. So in 2 Corinthians 10, 1 through 6, Paul, he says, Now I beseech you by the meekness and the gentleness of Christ and the presence among you, be absent but bold towards you. So Paul was bold towards the things that he was getting from God. He didn't say, hey, it's a good idea. He said, you have to do this. He said, this mind must be in you. That's also in Christ Jesus. He said, our ways are not His ways. And He would tell and He would bring the Word of God. He says, meditate on this. Think on this. React to this. But when we're so sin, that's why people say, well, it's like they don't even read those. Like, I'm, I'm a Christian. They don't even listen to the Word of God and all that. There's no way for them to be changed. And that's one of the reasons we meet one, two, three, four times a week and then we talk to one another to bring the, the, the mind of Christ into the situation, the Word of God. Somebody knows more than somebody else. It doesn't matter if you, what position you are in the body of Christ. There might be an area in your life that somebody knows a lot more that's mastered it because they've gone through it and God has set them free. And then, but not in formulas and traditions, just because something 
got someone free doesn't mean they're free in Christ completely. Because if they get free but they're still stuck in their old traditions or their ways and God said that was just a stepping stone to get you to another level, not to stay and live and teach people how to just to get out of poverty but also to be bound in the way you think. So God's whole, tr whole thing, religion will get you from A to Z but it will not totally bring you into the kingdom. You know, formulas are good but formulas become traditional and formulas shut down the kingdom because God's not A, B, and C. God's not a step program. He's a, he, the Word of God changes us, period. Yes, amen. From grace, it's not a step, it's, 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 it's a it's, it's, it's a disappearing, so it's supernatural, a disappearing of ourselves and appearing of Christ. So there's a heavenly exchange always happening, and if that's not happening, we're stuck because of mindsets and traditions and, what do we say, um, strongholds. So Paul said this, but I beseech you, so let, let's, let's identify to who he's talking to. He's talking to a church now that's moving in the gifts, that recognizes the Holy Spirit, that's actually like healing people, doing all kinds of things, but he's saying to them, but you're, you're having a hard time to shake this flesh. You're having a hard time to break you free from because we're Corinthians were known for, for their gods, for their idolatry, for their, their pampering of the flesh, for all these things that, that were very... Um, they, the Corinthians were very um, like Romans, you know, like it was... Um, if, you, if you take the, the Corinthians, they were very, very um, paganistic and very, very worldly, more than the, some so. So you got to so look at that. Now Paul's like they got the truth, and the, but they had all their other things, and that's why the work Nicholas came in and brought more pagan things into them because then they thought, but 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 Paul said you you, you got to change the way you think completely. So he said this to them, though I'm not with you, but I'm bold in what I'm going to tell you. Though we walk in the flesh. We do not war after the flesh. For our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God in pulling down strongholds. <coughs> casting down, here's one clear here. Casting down everything that exalts itself. See, it's not saying, nothing can exalt itself unless you let it. First of all, exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing it into captivity every, every thought to the obedience of Christ. So one said that even in the Old Testament they were taking ground on, in the world and everything. But in the New Testament the, the battle is in our minds so the enemy wants to take space in your mind. Remember everyone say the thing about Hey, don't let that guy rent space. Because you're giving him a place. It's like this. You own all this land, and right in the middle you say, okay, I'm going to give you this much land, but you own everything. It's like your mind, right? And then, you know, you say, okay, you can have a little bit. Then all of a sudden this person comes, and legally, he said, you know, right in the middle of your beautiful, quiet place and everything. And he takes territory sizes. And all of a sudden, they own it now because you gave it to them. They start playing worldly music. They start saying stuff they don't. And you're, 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 you're like, this is yours, but you gave this, this place over right in the middle. And they started to do all these things you don't like. But because you allowed it and you, they're not trespassing because you actually gave them permission to do that. And that's the problem with a lot of our mind. We're giving the devil permission to be there. We're giving him permission when he really doesn't because God has given us all authority. 
But if you don't know what you have and the authority that you have, and I did all these things and, and know the Word of God, you're going to have mindsets and things. You're going to lit. You're going to come to Jesus, be born again, and never change because you're not letting the the the, the Word of God change your thinking and other people and let other people show you something that you might not think. Or even though something helped you get from A to A to B, it's not going to get you to 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 F and G because it was only a stepping stone. So when we hold on to things that were so good, even though they helped us, they're not going to get us to where we're supposed to be unless we're renewed completely in our mind. So it says whatever you and, and he says pulling down strongholds, casting down imagine every high thing that exalts itself above the obedience and the knowledge of God and the obedience of Christ. There's another key, obedience of Christ. Having an all readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So, all readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is being fulfilled. It's the exchange. I now... I, I'm, I'm a bastard, now I'm a son. Now I have the power to become the Son of God. That means I have a mandate to become and to be changed into the image of Christ as, as according to Romans chapter 8, that the, the manifestation of Christ being the Word of God and the Spirit of God is renewing us to be like Him and to think like Him. Because you can't be like something you don't think like it. So God's putting the Word of God in our minds and in our hearts. But it's not just in our hearts. Our mind must be renewed. Yes. So the old must come in, out to, for the new to come in. But if we don't let go of these, they're going to be set in our mind. That's what they're called mindsets. We leave them set in there. We need to break, break these mindsets. All ready to revenge. It's like all disobedience. It's like do it mightily. Romans 8, 6 through 8 says, For the carnally minded is death, but the spiritually minded is life and peace. Then religion will say, Don't be too spiritually minded, you're no earthly good. God says to have any carnal mind is, is poison and is dangerous and will destroy, and the kingdom of God will not be manifested in you. So the, even these little sayings are little, little um, traps that catch you. Little traps. And that's why you have to say, well, that doesn't line up with the Word of God. And then the Word of God, and God will confirm it here and here, says, and then you cast it down. Religion will come out with all things to make whatever they're doing right and add a little Scripture. That's why we need the full counsel of the Word of God complete in our life. That's why cherry-picking, you get certain kind of movements, grace movement, love movement, but it's not the fullness of the Gospel of Christ. Because he's full, and that's when you can't leave out judgment and have have the right the right um, revelation of mercy, and you can't only have judgment and have the right revelation of, of of mercy, and you can't have and then people that leave it all out and just put their own stuff in there, and you just get a, a doctrines of devils. But even a doctrine that leaves out the other um, the if. If they always, and, and just adds the blessing, it says, if this mind be in you, that's also it. Or if my people who are called by my name, they always want to say, you know, it, there's always something God says to, that we have to let go of to get. We have two hands, and they're on the, and that's why God says, if you put your hand to the to the plow. Don't be looking back because you're going to be double-minded. You get, you're still thinking about back there when God says think of things above or ahead. The kingdom of God is not behind us, it's in front of us. Not forgetting those things behind, pressing forth, but not only not forgetting the things that... See, we need to remember what God has shown us and is teaching us as we're getting new things. So replacing the world sets to the to the kingdom sets. So he says, because the carnal mind 
is against is is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So how the renewing of the mind, renewing is to return. Then we're, remember, we're born again, so we got to find out where was the again. Where did I really come from? Where is it? Where, where, how am I really supposed to think? What am I really like before I got um, birthed into sin? Because now we have the power over sin. But see, that's why a lot of Christians get stuck in, 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 in and that's why even in NA and A, they call it relapsing. But we relapse back into the world thinking and the world ways. Because relapse is going back to something you were already set free from. So relapse, and, and, and in NAA it's all about the drug, but in the kingdom of God it's all about a changed mind. So it's like, who cares if you do uh, the thing that they're worried about is the fruit of something. But you cannot never change the tree unless you pull out the roots. All you're doing in NA and A and all those things is continuously cutting down, cutting down all the time. Yeah. You go to a meeting and you cut down, you cut down, but you never pull out. You never uproot. The mindsets are still there. You're just not allowing the fruit of those mindsets. So you, you live in this prison in your own mind because you're really not free. You're just not doing the thing that you, you had to do to relieve the thing that was causing it you to do it. So in a sense, your whole... Your whole identity comes in, I'm absent from what destroys me, but what's really destroying us was our mind. Because Christ gives us a new mind. So, what is renewing? It's to restart, to begin again, to recommence, to take up again, to, to, um, and then there's a, to repeat, to reiterate, to re restate, to renew, regenerate. Revitalize, revigorate, breathe new life into, rekindle, renew interest, restore. God wants us to give us the mind that we really had from the beginning. So in Romans 1, 16, let's read. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power. So let's say everyone just wants to talk about the gospel. Jesus just going to the cross and I get saved. That's not the gospel. The gospel is the power, he says it right here, for it is the power of God unto salvation, yeah. not unto um, getting into heaven and being saved only. That's what this whole thing about. It's the power unto salvation. And then he goes along and, and Jesus talks about, tells us to, it's the gospel of the kingdom of God, not just the gospel unto being saved. See, that's why evangelists love, because it's so easy. Everybody's yes on that, but nobody... Then, then go a step further when the apostle and the prophet come and they want to... Um, everyone saw they Jeremiah, right? To uproot up... These are things in the Spirit we're uprooting too. Not only... It's uprooting mindsets, uprooting strongholds, uprooting everything that exalts itself by the Word of God. And everything... And in the church, he's doing it as well in a corporate setting. Uprooting it by the corporate Word of God. So... And to the Christ, to the power. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there is the righteousness, the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. For the just shall live by faith. So we need to believe the word. You can read the word all day and if you don't believe it, it's not going to take effect in you. Because what you believe will... will produces faith and what you have faith in God moves on our faith. That's why he says to be a doer of word, not a hearer only, then you deceive yourself. I don't care if someone hears all the word and meditates on it, if they don't really believe it, it's not gonna it's not gonna you can hear it, but then all of a sudden you hear and then it goes against your thinking and then you wrestle in your mind. And then sometimes if your mind is so strong, that's what we call even Jesus had to wrestle with his mind. And there it goes. If people that have a strong will, they're the hardest ones to, to, to be changed in their mind. Because it's, they have to give up their will, their, their way, and their thinking. And that's why the most powerful people is the ones with the strongest will when they finally let it go because they have such a strong 
when it gets renewed, they can they go really far with God, but it's a hard process until that happens. And what is the whole ultimate thing? Is their pride? No, this can't because what? They're always right, or they think they're right, and that's why God gives us His word in one another. So it's the strong, it's the will comes in the mind, and it's the thinking, and that's why Jesus said He wanted to do it His way, but He knew God had another way. And he had a purpose for him to do it. And he said, you know, my whole purpose was to go to the cross. Not my whole purpose, but one of the main purposes, to die for the sins of the world. So there's not going to be an easier way to do it. Religion always wants to find an easy way to do it. Yeah. Come to one deliverance session. Get it over with so you can be free the rest of your life. Yeah. And God's like, this is something that's going to become a lifestyle, right. not a session. It's something that we have to put on Christ every single day. We put on and, and, and cast down everything all the time and always be hearing the Word of God. Yes. If it was one sermon and one prayer, then we'd all be in be in be because we're all we're all we all love them. But people don't get that. And then they'll say, Well, I'm, he set me free two thousand years. I said, But why are you still stuck? If you're free, why all you see is the chains of those people. So they they get this mindset. That's the false grace thing. They never change because, and it's like, yeah, but look, you're so you're so in bondage, but you have all this. You're actually, you're deceiving your own mind, and there's lots of movements like that. And then they, they get a reprobate mind because then they don't even think that they have sin anymore, or these these strongholds or there's these mindsets, they just ignore them. Like, this is how we are, but now I'm just like Christ. So they just actually, what they do is they just basically bury it and hide it under their own gospel of thinking because they have this mindset that they're in these strongholds that they're putting up. And then people look at them, they act like they're free, but they're really not. For the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and the righteousness of men that hold not the truth. It isn't the unrighteousness that God's, because we all have problems. That's the unrighteousness of men who hold not the truth in unrighteousness, because that which be made known of God is manifest unto them, for God has showed it unto them. See, God has showed it unto them, because for the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made. And even His eternal power of the Godhead so that they are without excuse. <laughs> because that when we, we, they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their own, right there's the key to, their own imaginations. Their own, that's what, um, you know, I don't want to pick, I'm not going to say it up, but certain denominations. They have certain things that they're so been engrafted because of pride, the minister broke out from someone else because he didn't see it, and he kept believing what he saw in the Word, but he didn't humble himself in a whole denomination. So nobody that comes under that gets brainwashed, in a sense, or mindset, to believe that little leaven. And that little leaven leavens the whole lump. It shuts down the whole kingdom. And everyone who wants to say, well, who? Oh, nobody knows everything. That's another thing the Holy Spirit does. That's right. And no man does, but there are men and women that are going from revelation to revelation. Right. Not stuck in a denomination. <laughs> and, 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 and the thing with it is, no, no one, and no one in boldness, but when they know something, they can bring... See, so God has... A pastors, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers that have been birthed from the Holy Spirit, not not grew up in a seminary or some um, um, religious institution that has been indoctrinated by all the other books and things that they've added in, but clearly by the Word of God. So even though there might be some truth in that, they've added all these things which comes into a reprobate mind. So there's all these traps and mindsets all filled into that truth that's being actually choked out by all the other things that don't need to be in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? It's just like, 
these other things. Yeah, Revelation. You can put Jesus Christ, but then you have another book that wasn't from God by some other prophet yeah. added into the other book that counters yeah. this book. And then they're saying, well, yeah, but we're all, we love that. You don't do, but no, because you're adding it. Adding to the to the word of God, yeah. and it's important. The, the, even the small words that are added could change a whole direction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then there's a few and like to just just key because um, we we've, we've we've gotten big problems if we don't read your text and you say don't and your and for some reason the don't's not there that changes the whole thing. Right. And some people might pick it up and they're like that doesn't. And then you got to go back and add that little letter at the end because you're, especially me, so fast because you're just like, you want to release it instead of going back and rereading it and adding those little things in there. Well, the enemy and the devil will just take a few little things out and can change the whole, the whole context of the heart of the Father and the Word of God. And that's what we see going on. And then religion, those are people that come with those mindsets will come and say, oh, they think they know everything. No, but we know the one who does. Amen. And that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. Amen. But we need to allow the Holy Spirit's coming in to humble ourselves under the Word of God. Amen. And that's where pride ends up. We don't grow because God what? And I'm going to get into that more. Than that. God resists the proud. If you're proud, believe what you want to believe. Don't be free. Think that. And then He'll even let you think that you think that. And then I'll think you think that. But it really isn't that. And that's that's the whole one of the whole concepts when Jesus says, take the beam out of your own eye and you're trying to and that's where religious people they always see all the problems, but they don't even they have more of them themselves. So basically, it's not that we're not to show people the word of God, it's the Holy Spirit actually using one another to bring us into more freedom. That's where the whole body of Christ comes comes in a, in agreement in 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 with it. So, the just shall live by faith. And it says, the unrighteous system and the truth and are unrighteous because that which have known God manifested in them, that God showed it unto them for the invisible things from the creation and the eternal Godhead without excuse because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not neither or thankful or became vain in their own. And no, Jesus said that they'll turn the truth into a lie and lies into the truth. Christian will do this automatically. That's why people go to hell. Jesus is the Word of God made flesh. It's not really not wanting... Everyone wants to receive that, but nobody wants to believe the Word and live by it and say that it's the truth. Because if it's not the truth, then you're your own God. <laughs> if the Word of God is not fully true, then you, can ha you have room to change it. Then you make yourself God. There's got to be something... More than what we think are, are, are at, or else we're, or else there's going to be leaven. And that's why man has to get out of the way. But God does use men to get us in His narrow way. But if it's not His, if it doesn't line up exactly with the Word of God, but see, people that have such mindsets and strongholds, they don't even see that it's the Word of God because they can't see through this big thing that they've made in their life. They built this big fortress and a lot of people for their protection, they hide around it. And the vows that they've made, they need to break them. I'm never going to trust anybody again. Well, then God sends someone in your life that He wants you to trust because you're going to get more breakthrough. You never do. you got to check it out by 50 different sources. And then by the time you're done, you're more confused and then your head's steaming and you're stuck because... You're never going to trust anybody. He didn't tell you to trust everybody. But you need to go and break that. Say, God, I'm going to trust who you trust, God. I'm going to follow. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Not follow me because I'm Paul and I'm an apostle. Follow me because why I'm following Christ. Because you have to. Because forerunners will take you where you can't go. Why? Because you're not, you weren't created to, to, to take on all the stuff that's coming. So basically, they make a path, and if you follow it, behind it, you're gonna, it's going to be an easier walk. But people with strongholds, they all want to 
get to the same place on their own way. So they got a shorter way. They go through the weeds and they get all tangled up and they're all hurting. And they're all, because they don't have the grace to make their own way because God set up His system. Yeah. And He set up the body of Christ with one another. And that's why we see all these people, they get a little revelation because in the beginning, they were humble and God was showing them. But then, their pride, that little thing they knew. Remember when God said, if you know everything already, it's all you're ever going to know? Because right. you know everything. Why is He going to tell you anything else? Until you say, God, I don't know nothing. And I choose to know nothing but you crucify. That's the only thing I need. And then He just starts showing you more and more. So it's like, you, you, it's like, so that whole pride thing, it's like, and that's where we see people break off and they start their own little prayer groups and all that. But they really don't have any anointing or power because they've started it. Because they know enough, yeah, you might know enough to make it, even make it, but you, you not know enough, you're not going to, but, but that what you know ain't going to have any power, and that what you know is not going to have any more revelation, and you're not going to be able to stop people free. Because now you're going on what you know, and not on being led by the Spirit. Because the Spirit of God resists the problem. So, we need to align everything up by the Word of God. And, the thing is, when we're small, we are like that. We try to be the wrong minister. That's the problem. We gave our open minds and open hearts and it was filled with crap. And so we put all these strongholds up. And then, the Holy Spirit comes and says, No, this is like, you don't even trust the Holy Spirit. And so we end up grie uh, quench uh, grieving Him yes. because He wants to help you, but we resist Him. Yeah. And, say they, and then it says here, it says, because when they knew God, they, they glorified Him not and became vain in their own, everybody say their own, their own. imagination, and foolish heart was darkened. Right. Professing themselves to be wise, you know, I know, you know, I got, and then people that agree, yeah, what are you, coming, you know, Jesus coming to the Pharisees and such, we've, we've sat, we've, we got all of our, dot. you know, go to some, I've been to five seminaries, and this little kid, two years in the Holy Spirit, is going to tell me something, and their own vain imaginations, because they don't want to receive anything from the Holy Spirit, God says, I'll use the foolish things of the wise, the foolish things of the world, to confound the wise, I'll take, Someone like Peter, a fisherman, and I'll bring him to, to you know, to, to show everybody all this stuff. <laughs> and I'll take Paul with all this knowledge and everything, and I'll send him to the people that know nothing. And I'll send Peter to, to the ones that know all this just to, just to confound their, and to make them, you know. And that's what people start doing to you because they don't get angry. They, they drop their stones, but they get so angry because they're like, how could this be? How could I have all this and all this man's wisdom and all these plaques and know and I can recite the whole New Testament and I know where everything is and but I know and God's like but you really know nothing. Paul knew all that but he allowed the mind of Christ now to be transformed in him. And Paul's like I can't think like I used to. I become all things all men that I might win some some things. I don't I don't come under them. I understand where they're coming from. And I help them. But when I understand where they're coming from, and I come to where they're at to try to show them, and they resist, and they don't want it, then I just go, I dust my feet. Yeah. He wasn't saying I come under, because he would be exalting himself above the Word of God. So he says, professing that they are wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible into the image of the light corruptible of the man and birds, and foothold and the beasts, and creeping things. And that's what New Age is doing. Wherefore God it gave them up to what? Uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. For this cause God gave them unto vile affections, and that's what ends up in false grace, because they don't they don't so they're being given over this, and in their mind they're like, Jesus, I just have to have to, I, I picked the right, you know, the right God, so I'm going to go to heaven. But God's like, no, I'm expecting you to, to, to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that He can raise you up 
and change your mind in the way you think and the way and, and the thing is even if you were so successful in the world and you're a billionaire God doesn't like the way you got that he wants you know that's why it's like people say to me that how can ever you be a car salesman and be a Christian because they're you know you got to be honest but you know you can sell the car and be honest God will just bring you the customers that are really gonna buy the car <laughs> and you'll be like selling more cars and you'll just be like just because and, and people can sense honesty too I mean people especially can can, can tell it and, and now with, with, with people with some wisdom and stuff with all the things you know back in the old time you could rip off so many old people because there's no internet nothing you don't know nothing there's nothing you're in the mercy of that and they and that's what but nowadays you know they can't be as slick as they can but they're exposed by the world so God wants us like the internet to be his tapping into him to get to get our wisdom and things that we need to know of the kingdom for this cause God gave them the vile affections and they changed their own way it says likewise men having natural use of women burn for the lust one towards another working which is unseemly receive themselves that recompense of the error which they meet and even did not like to retain God in their knowledge. And that's what Christians are doing all the time. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. Why? They deny the power unto salvation. They deny, they want the cross for Jesus, but they don't want it for themselves. Because the power says, he says, you know, they want the cross. Oh yeah, Jesus died for me. The cross is great for him, but I'm not picking up one. I'm not changing. He did everything. And look, it's by grace. We're not saved by works. Then they come with this whole thing that's actually... No, but it's the submission unto the power of God and of the submission to the Word of God that changes you in. It's not only... The only way to be changed into His image is by His Word and His power Amen. and Him being changed in you. And that's the process that we're all in. And it comes through the fire and the water and the oil. And then God brings the wind to blow all the bad stuff away. And then all of a sudden you get a refreshing when all this dead stuff starts on you. And then He comes with winds that are refreshing. And then every time we're becoming lighter and lighter because in the Spirit there is no weight. So being filled with all... So it says... And, and then it says... And then we have... That's why we have this... In, that's why religion is a stronghold too. And then He says unrighteous, fornication, wickedness, malicious, full envy... Full of envy, jealousy, debates, whisperers, malady, deceit, covenous, backbiters, haters of... And then it ends with uh, haters of God, despiteful, proud book. He was trying to talk about the world here, but we have this in the church now. And he was talking to church. He says, no, you can't be like this because we're now we're being renewed. And you got to put off the way the world was without understanding covenant breakers, without natural affection... So people living in this want you to sit down and do a deliverance session with you, but they don't have any coherence about the revelation of becoming like Christ. It's all about formulas and do this or do that and get up in the morning and say this prayer. But how many know, it doesn't matter what comes out now in this sense, because what, what goes in here in your mind in the abundance of your heart, some people will say, well, but he was talking about food. When Jesus says, it's not what defiles a man that goes in, because that's what religious people use that scripture all the time too. It's what comes out. It's true. But the only thing that can come out is what goes in. Yeah. So when Paul was talking about that, he was talking about food. It's not the things that we eat in the natural, but what we take in in our thoughts and our imaginations, right? He just said it here, that are above the Word of God will mess you up. And they'll start coming out. The abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So what you're filling your heart with will be what starts coming out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. So if your heart's still filled with the old man and you hit your... I, I've done this several times. And I've realized you used to cuss. Boom! You get hit with a hammer. And you're... Oh, man. Because you don't do that naturally. A lot of people just naturally cuss all the time. They just got real big problems. Their whole life is cussing. But in the world, something happens... And boom, and you cuss. Now, 
you hit your thumb with a hammer. What I have noticed is like, shut that up! You speak in tongues. <laughs> have you ever done that? Or slam your foot and it's like that's because now you that's what's more in you is is, is God. So you go to some oh that's just Billy Joe, he just no, that's just um, an unrenewed mind and a reprobate to the faith. I don't care how many you sit in church every Sunday, if you're cussing like a sailor and you're ten years Christian and they say, Oh, that's just old Billy or make old um, Bobby Joe, you know, that's just the way that's what we do in religion, oh that's just the way they are. That's just old that's old mother's side. Don't get near her. She doesn't like this, she doesn't like that. Well she better she better repent. And what we do in religion is we say that's just the way we are, that person is. And we put all this power on our flesh and our old man, and we put all this power on our our forefathers. And, oh, he's just like his father. Yeah. But you know what? That's the old man. Our father was born in sin, but our new father is being renewed day by day. Praise God. You know what I mean? So we're like we're supposed to be be looking like our heavenly father. And our old man. When things got heavy, we, you know, even when we didn't drink anymore, we were just like, I'm just going to go have. And that's what NA is like. I just can't. It's like, that's it. And go to a meeting. No, go cut some fruit. No, go, go vent. We don't vent anymore. We don't have to vent. When we're free, you don't vent. It doesn't affect you anymore. Venting is for those that are learning how to, how to get self-control in their flesh. But... My Bible says self-control comes from the Spirit of God. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. So when He's being renewed and changed in you, you're just having self-control. It's not something that you're producing in the flesh. And that's what Paul was all talking about. Don't come under the law and operate in the flesh. And all, all the false grace people want to say, Oh, brother, we're all got problems. Yeah, we're not identifying that we don't all have problems. We're identifying we're not letting the problems control us and we're not going to give make the problems in our life our God or give over to them and say that God's not capable of, of changing that. Because He says Jesus didn't have those problems and He said we can be the manifestation of the sons of God too. And it talks about, and it says, uh, in, in placeable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, and he's talking to Christians though, really, because he's, he's saying, you know, but he's saying the world lives like this, but you Christians are living like this, but you shouldn't be. You need to stop, because now there's the power for your salvation to, to change. So he says, to the judgment of God, which commits such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in doing them. So in false grace, they begin to have pleasure in that. Who doesn't want to think there's no cons. This is what false grace is too now. It's like, I can now do whatever I want. Now there's no consequences because of Christ. Mm -hmm. Before Christ, there was consequences. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, there is consequences. Yes. Because he'll turn you over to the devil if you do not. He's not turning you over to the devil because of your weakness. And because you've fallen, he's turning you over because you're allowing your mind to exalt itself above the mind of Christ. It exalts itself above the Word of God. Then there's no hope for you. So in humility is all the fullness of God. 1 Corinthians 2, 4 to 6. And he says this, In my speech and my preaching was not the enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit of power. The Spirit and power. Not just the Spirit and power. That your faith should not stand in your own mind or the wisdom of men or in denominational doctrines or in man, but in the power of God. Everybody just thinks we're just talking about the power because somebody falls down or somebody gets healed. The power of God that you don't see. The power of God that's changing us and, and by day by day from faith to faith and grace to grace. And, and He doesn't want you... And then He'll let you see it sometimes to help you keep going. Amen. And then He starts showing you that. Because some of us realize, if you've seen the mess that you really were, and some we saw that, and you'd never think you could. So He takes you from faith to faith, and from layer to layer, and from, from grace to grace. Right. It is the grace of God that, we, that changes us. 
but it's our submission to His power, and, and in pride we cannot be changed. And then the mindsets will stop us from being changed. And if we don't let go of strongholds, you're still bound. You're bound to yourself. You're holding on to something God's saying, let it go. Let it go. Letting go of those things behind. This is people now. They're like getting pulled to their past and they're holding on. The, and they, wait, you can't go anywhere. you got your hand of the plow and you're holding on to yesterday. So you're holding on there. And you're so strong because you're a, you're a strong man. And you're holding and you're like really strong. And you're holding here and the plow is trying to take you forward. And you're just holding on. So you, where do you go? Nowhere. The lawnmower's digging in the thing, the plow, and it's raising up in the air because you're holding it. And then you're holding on here. God's like, you, you, you can't go forward and, and, and clear the path for you until you let go of, of, of your old thinking and your old ways. And the mindsets that are behind you. So he says, <clears throat> I speak not of the wisdom. How about we speak wisdom among them that are perfect yet? The wisdom of the world, nor the princes of the world. Saying, we don't, I'm not speaking like the world, for the, they will come to nothing, to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto glory, which none of the princes of the world knew, for if they had known it, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. So even though it was all written what was going to happen, they didn't even know because they didn't have the revelation of Christ. They had the information of the Word. Satan had the Word too from the beginning. He saw, but he didn't have the mind of Christ because he exalted himself. He exalted his throne. He wanted to be better than God. So pride, and then he didn't know. He could have known all things with God as everyone is beginning to do, but below God. So we become just, and that's why... He would say, your father is the devil, because what? They look just like him. They were full of pride. The Pharisees and the Sadducees. Had, and eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Remember he said, if you love him, you obey him and do his commandments. Yeah. So you can't obey him by exalting yourself above him. <clears throat> and there's the promise. Everyone wants to quote this all the time. Oh! Brother, you're, you're in perfect sin. It's going to be okay, brother. You don't know what's going to be prepared instead of repenting. The things that are prepared for God who loves them, and they never change. False grace. But God has revealed them unto, and it's all the people, because it comes all the time, all the people that struggle in their sin are always the ones that love to, to fight that thing. And you can they, they expose themselves on Facebook all the time. Because they're trying to preach to themselves instead of just repenting. They're, they want to find that instead of rending their heart, they exalt themselves and say, but look, Jesus said this and he said that. But in that, they stay in there and they stay where they're at. For what man knoweth the things of man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit, that's us right here, of God, that we might know things that are freely given to us by God. Which things we also speak, not as the words which man's wisdom teach, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. And then that's the pride thing too. It's like nobody wants to receive the Holy Ghost in other people. Yeah. Then they'll use that scripture, well, the Holy Ghost will teach. Yeah. He's like, yeah, but he's showing me that you need help right here. Oh no, the Holy Spirit. I gotta hear. I gotta. I'm waiting for God's confirmation, and then someone else comes, and then someone else, and then it's like because they set their mind also how they hear God. And it's like you might have heard God that way in that season, but God's bringing another season. He wants to speak to you now in dreams, or He wants to speak to you through the body because you didn't have the body around you, but you have a mindset. No, I always hear God this way. It's like, well, I'm not talking this way anymore. Who are you hearing now? You see what I'm saying? Because He's like He has to. He's 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 teaching us so it's like speak the words like of man's wisdom but the wisdom teaches us the Holy Ghost teaches us comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man receives not the things of the spirit of them which they are spiritually discerned everybody say discerned, discerned. 
But he that is spiritual judges all things. It didn't say judges all people or all men or everybody. Judges all things that are pertaining to God and the kingdom is what he's saying. Yet he himself is judged by no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So I'm saying they're the religious people. Yeah, you got a religious mind. Don't try to get in my way, and I'm not going to listen to you because your 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 spirit's trying to say you're bringing confusion. The minute that I'm I'm, I'm not, I, I I gotta think about it, it didn't come from God like that. I'm not saying God leading you to, but re revelation just pops. You know it. It's like, wow, and it's it's like a, another band of freedom. It's 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 every time we. Christ reveals Himself more because He's the Word, we're freer and freer. Yes. It's from revelation to revelation, from glory to glory. He's the glory. Yes. Not from information to information. You can know all you want about Him, but it's knowing Him. It's seeing Him is the freer thing. And sometimes His ways are not our ways, and we need to embrace what He's showing us to be able to be free from what we think we, we, we've overcome. In Colossians 1.21, it says, And that we're sometimes alienated enemies in your mind by wicked works. But yet, now you, He has reconciled you. We're reconciled. We need to live like it. We need to think like it. We need to act like it. And we need not to exalt our old man under that reconciled mind. Let this mind be in us that's also in Christ Jesus. says, and that's what he says in 2 Timothy 3.8. Now Janus and Jarvis withstood Moses. So, so Moses was hearing God. But they all said, well, we hear God too. But they withstood Moses to do these. They also resist the truth. Men of what? Corrupt minds. Reprobate concerning what? The faith. Reprobate concerning the word of God. They might know a lot of things. But... You, you don't want to go to someone that knows a lot of things, you know. If you want to get a real good um, job in your house, right, and you, you want to, okay, let's, the last person you go, when you want to save money, you go to a handyman that knows a little bit of everything. That's what people in religion do. They know a little bit of everything. But if you want a good job and you're going to pour concrete, you're going to go to a concrete man. Right? When you when you want when you want your sink done, a handyman might be able to do it and you'll save some money, but you might have some leaks in the future and you might it might be on backwards and it might take them a long time. But so you, so when it comes to um, the word of God, you want to go to someone that knows it. Mm -hmm. And you wanna go by the Holy Spirit lead you to. Mm -hmm. And even in that, God will lead you to the best person to help you with the things if you wait on him. Mm -hmm. In Ephesians. So <clears throat> to concerning to the faith. So a lot of these people know a lot, <clears throat> but they've mastered nothing. They know a lot of this and a lot of that, so they're going to bring a lot of confusion. And opinions and opinions. Yeah. There's no opinion. There's one question. Just answer. Jesus said, I'll give you, have an answer for every single person that has a question. How many people can do that still right now? Because mm -hmm. it's all in the Word. When we have the mind of Christ, we can do that. Ephesians 4, 23-20, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man. It's not something that's automatic. You put it on. If it was automatic, you'd have it on. You put on the new man, which is after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away evil speaking, lying to your neighbor, and we are members one of another, and be angry and sin not, and let not your son go, the sun go down in wrath. Neither give place to the devil. So if you give place to these strongholds, or to these carnal thinking, doesn't mean it's right even though everyone's doing it. Or everyone, that's how the world does it. But we are, we are the head not the tail. We're seated with him. He says, think on things above, not on things below. We're moth and right. He said, think on things above. He's the Word. Think on the Word. So that means you need to be below it. So many people get to know so many so many things and then they stop themselves. 
They know a lot more than a lot of people, but once they, they say, oh, they, they know enough, and then God says, well, then if you know enough, then you don't need to know anymore. It's the hungry that get filled. It's the desperate that see something. It's those that... that so God says, the, if you're hungry, I'll fill you. James 4.1 talks about it like this. For for whence wars and fightings among you, come not hence even of your lust, that you war in your members. You lust and have not. You kill and desire to have. You cannot obtain, yet you fight a war, yet you have not. And you fight to know all these things, but you don't get it because you ask not. You ask and you receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your love. A lot of people want to know everything because they want to know everything so they want to know more than someone else. Yeah. God's not going to give you that revelation in that. And if you're full of pride, He won't because He'll say you'll lose it. Because if I show you too much, people are going to be so impressed in you, you'll, I'll lose you. So I mean, I'm going to even let you think you know some things and make you look a fool. And that's how he works too. That's part of the whole fire thing. And he'll make you think. He didn't say he, he gave you false things. He lets you think that. But he said, let this mind be in you. But if you humble yourself, then he was not going to do that. And he said, know that the friendship with the... And it says here, and the friendship of the... He says, you adulterers and adulterers, for the friendship of the world is, is a separation with God. Whosoever wherefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. He's, he's talking about thinking. He's talking about ways of, of, of a friend. He's not saying you can't have friends in the world. And he's not saying, because he, he also tells us to hate the world. What he's saying is to, to come in agreement with it, to its ways of thinking, to the ways of doing things. His ways are higher than the world. The world came and corrupt sin. There's different ways that all these things are being done, but it's not his ways. So when you come in friendship with it, when you come in agreement with it, when you come in fellowship with it, memory says, how can two walk dead unless they agree? When you start walking with the world, you're going to think like the world. So he says, you come out of the world so you can walk like him. So he also says, when you come in agreement, says, how can two, um, two, two um, agree on, uh, um, yeah, two walk unless, unless they agree. But he also says, to be unequally yoked, do not be unequally yoked. That's what he's saying, be a friend. Don't, you cannot be yoked up with the world. Because it'll contaminate you and bring confusion. You'll be a double-minded. Right. Because to be carnally, worldly-minded, and people say, well, that's all my... You need to trust God. Then. He'll take all your, your, your worldly wisdom and success. He'll renew it, because that means you're smart anyway, and then you'll be ten times better, because then you'll have the kingdom mind. Because if you have a strong mind, let Him renew it, and it'll be even stronger for Him. He gives, and it says here, and there's twice he says this, but this is the other time he says it, because he also talks another time in the Bible about resisting the pride and giving grace to the humble. And the scripture said in vain that the spirit dwelt is lustest to envy. He said, but he's given more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud and gives grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to what God? Resist the devil, and he will flee. A lot of people say, oh, resist the devil. Well, where's the first things? And everybody knows this, but to submit to God. And who is God? The Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. The Word was with God. The Word. And there was nothing before Him. And when He said, He spoke light, He spoke. He spoke, Jesus is the light of the world. Amen. And it says, and He will flee from you. And not He... He didn't say he might. He will. So if you if we're all having problems with the devil, you need to submit to God and His Word. Yeah. If you got strongholds, it's because you 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 won't let them go. Yeah. <clears throat> the power into salvation is the cross. And then you know your strongholds, your victim mentality. Let it go. You're not a victim anymore. You're a vi you're victorious in Him. Yeah. Your strongholds, uh, your poverty. Let it go. You're rich in Him. If your strongholds fear, let it go. Because you can have nothing without faith. And you and, 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 and faith is the, of everything we get from God. you got to let go of these things to hold on to the right thing. You cannot be double-minded. You're going to be looking like this all the time. Back and forth, back and forth. It says, draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. It's not a maybe. It's the truth. 
Cleanse your heart, and he's no respecter of person. It doesn't matter what you did in the past. Let it go. Yesterday. Today is the day of salvation. Get it right now. And sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. A lot of people like to go, go boldly to the throne of grace in pride. No, it says boldly, not pridefully. <laughs> boldly means you know what he did and there's nothing, and you're boldly going because of him, not because of any of your power or your strength. But when you go pridefully, you're going because he owes you, or you think you're justified, or you've done enough works in, the, in religion or flesh, you ain't going to get nothing. He says, I beseech you, therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is reasonable service. And be not conformed. That means your mind. Don't conform to what the world does and thinks and says. But be, yea, transformed by the renewing. What? Everybody say renewing. renewing. And we read what that was. The renewing of your mind. So if there's no renewing of your mind, you won't change. doesn't matter how many services you go to. You can do midnight mass. You can do <laughs> ten candlelight services. And you can go uh, to church every day or, and go to Bible studies every single night. But if, 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 you're not, if the Word's not renewing, if, you're not letting, if the power of God's not working, nothing's going to happen. But you, and he doesn't say he's going to do it. He does it by submission. By submission. He says, you be renewed in your mind. Here it is. Him, okay. Um, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove. Now he's saying you may prove um, what is good, what it, that is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Good, acceptable, perfect will of God. One will of God. When you let your mind renew, you know what the will of God is. If you don't know the Word of God, you can't know the will of God. Remember we talked and we preached about the unknown will of God and the known will of God? The Word of God is the known will of God. The un But you'll never know the unknown will unless you submit to the because then you're rebellious and God's not going to say nothing. <laughs> so it all works hand in hand with his kingdom he says and, and though the grace given unto you to every man that is among you not to think himself more highly than he ought to think again it's talking about what, where do we think in our mind but to think soberly that means clearly according as God has dealt to every everybody say every man every man the same measure of faith. The same measure of faith. Let's go to Ephesians. I'm almost done. Right here. <laughs> Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God, wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as unto the Lord. For husbands is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and the savor of the body. Where, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, now pay attention, Christ, so let the wives also be subject to their husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ has loved the church and gave Himself for it. We need to give ourselves for the truth. For this Word of God. We need to continue to submit, humble or under, that protection of the Word of God. Anyone that exalts, see, when we, I don't care what minister said it, if it's not up what this word says, it doesn't matter. If it says, Satan and Satan himself will dress himself up as a minister of righteousness, right. deceiving so many. That's why the word, but the word of God is so clear. But we can grow like crazy in humility. The thing is, when we were him, we learned enough to get us all messed up. Because we were humble because we knew nothing. And then we started to nurse something. And then that pride that we didn't kill and stays humble took over. So that stuff that we found out that other people didn't know ended up becoming the, our biggest problem because now we enforce it on people. Or we won't. Or we like, I know, you don't like, it's that whole pride thing. And then you don't know nothing more. And then all of a sudden, you think you know so much and you really don't. And then you be made a fool of. And that's what God uses to, to bring us into humility. 
So he uses this representation of marriage, but he's really talking about the church. He said that we might sanctify. He says, okay, husbands loved your wives and, and gave himself, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. The washing of the water by the word. That he might present himself a glorious church. Now he talks about the church again. So he's giving you representation in the natural so you can see what he's talking about in the spirit. So look at your... If you're married, your husband being the word of God. And submitting yourself under the word. And that's how he's saying that the church must do to Christ. And he is the word of God. And it says this. Having no spot nor wrinkle or any such thing that he should be holy without blemish. So ought men love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loves himself. For no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherisheth it for the and even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause, a man shall leave father and mother and shall be joined to his own. For this cause, we should leave the doctrines of the world. For this cause, we leave the mindsets of the world. For this cause, we leave the carnal thinking and the wisdom of this world is what he's saying. So he's using the demonstration of father and mother because that's where you come from. <laughs> and shall be joined unto his wife. I'm joined unto Christ, the truth, the word of God. And the two shall become one. So he's saying you must become one with the word. But without you, until you allow this mind to be in you, you're going to have problems. The problems stop with the renewing of the mind. Because grace does it. We only have to surrender to grace. You can resist grace by being prideful. God gives grace to the what? Oh. It's very simple. But speak, I can speak, can speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular to love his wife, even himself, as, as the wife see that he reverence her. So we reverence the word of God. Put it above all things. Paul was not, he was talking about the word of God. Don't even, the religious system doesn't even get that. Yeah. They just, they, they don't even see the real mystery of the whole thing. It's all about the word of God becoming flesh in us. Right. Mindsets and strongholds are exalting themselves. When you exalt yourself, you exalt your mindset, you exalt your ways. So, and, and, and I love it when some, some people leave here and they go back and people say, yeah, they're all saying you. We're, I'm being brainwashed now. I'm like, yeah. You know what that means? Because they're in the world. You're, you're being brainwashed into the way Christ is. It's good. It's washing of the water world. It's your brain. You're thinking. The way you think. The way your body moves. Everything. You want to be brainwashed, but not by some psychologist of the world, or some nut, or some demon, or some devil, but by the, by the, by the Word of God. So when the world says you're being brainwashed, you're going to say, okay, that's great. Because you're what you're doing is you're, you're actually um, bearing witness that I'm being changed. Yeah. So you should say, thank you. Yeah. And, 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 and because that is what's going on. And, and, and they don't understand because they think you're different because... They got mindsets and thinking that's not like you anymore because you're not like them anymore. Right. So just because you're supposed to think like Him. And then when we all become in one accord and one mind, remember? In the Bible it says, and they're all in the upper room, one mind, one accord, and the Holy Spirit came. And when the church is in all in one mind, one accord, in the end, we're going to meet Him in the air. Yeah. Yeah. One mind. And it, it has to be the mind of Christ. Yeah. Let this mind be in you that's also in Christ. And he says, and this is what the real church is doing. The washing of the mind is the word of God. 
The washing of the Word of God. And the breaking of the strongholds is the hammer of the Word of God. But what do you say? Who, 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 who gets reprobate mind? Those that resist the truth become a reprobate mind. Those that resist the hammer keep their mindsets. Keep, keep their stronghold on to the, their stronghold to what they believe. Humility is the key to everything. Let's look. Last passage. <clears throat> Luke 9, 44 through 48. I'm going to finish here. Let <clears throat> these saints... You want to come up and um, start playing? Let these sayings... Look what Jesus said to them. This is so awesome. Jesus, right? How many times do you say the same thing? Why do we keep... How many times have we heard about karma? We, we keep... We gotta keep hearing it. Because it's a constant thing. It's a constant... Because what? You go out there, especially if you watch TV and all that, then you're really going to get a lot coming. You go out there, you're going to hear opposite. You need to keep hearing more of the Word of God to outweigh what you're hearing out there. You need to resist those things right away. Take, take them captive. Take them captive. Um... Turn off this other mic, though, and just keep the hers on. Keep it captive. Right, take it captive means don't let it sink in. Put it in prison and cast it out. Everything that exalts itself above this written word of God. So, Jesus said this. And how many times did he say this and they still didn't get it? So how many times do you think you're going to get it when even Jesus in the flesh said to them so many times, so many things? That's what he would say. Verily, verily, he says, I'm going to... Telling you this again and again. So if we keep hearing the same thing even in one week, it's because it hasn't gotten in. He says this. He says, let these sayings sink down into your ears. And you don't remember Jesus saying that? Luke 44 he says, let these say, let my words sink down into your ears. Let it be planted in your mind, in your thoughts. And he's also saying, and, and, and he's, then he goes again and says, For the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. But they understood not his sayings. You're not gonna, you might not get it the first time. You might not get it the fifth time. You might not get it a hundred times. And if you're proud, you'll never get it. You understand? But somebody might get it, and you can get it faster if you humble yourself. Because you can explain something a lot better than just someone else trying to just get it. And it says, But they understood not his sayings, and it was hid from them that they perceived it not. And they feared to ask him, him of that saying. What actually? No, they had too much pride to ask him what he was really talking about. Right? They don't want to look stupid. Think about it right there. It, it said it was hidden from them because what? Pride. They were getting real prideful. And they feared to ask him of that saying. What do they fear? They're another stronghold. They had fear. People are afraid to come up here and pray because they might not be wrong. It's all pride, guys. You're not afraid because when certain people aren't here, you, you, don't, have, you don't have that fear. So if you're afraid of certain people then that means you think that that person is so much greater than you that you, you'll you look stupid. But you got to understand our major is Christ, not one another. Nobody's judging anybody. And if you let those mindsets be in you, it's going to hold you back. You need to break out of your own shell because nobody knows. And, 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 and you'll start blowing, and God will blow your mind of what He'll give you in that hour. Don't you know that Jesus said this? He said, don't even think what you got. You feel an urge to pray? Just come up and pray. Don't even think. We want to have it all thought out. I'm going to say this, this, and this. And, oh, that'll be cool. And then we get up there. But he says, don't even worry about what you're going to say before you say it. I'm going to put my words in you. Why? When you humble yourself and trust me, I'm going to fill you. When you want to know it all and have everything right and have your, all your notes and that's why religion is so prideful. They always have their five-point sermon. Instead of just getting a few scriptures from God and trusting that He's going to fill your mouth. Because then you can only go so far with your own thinking. 
And it's so much different when you allow Him to renew your mind. So He said this to them, and they rose and reasoning among themselves. Or you go to your home and you start reasoning among yourself. He was right there. Why don't you ask Him? Like the King of Kings, Lord, like the, He was right there. Wouldn't, you, wouldn't we now, knowing, take every minute and, and, and every opportunity to take advantage? And He was trying to say, take advantage of me. I'm going to the cross soon. And He's like, you won't even ask me things that can help you because of your pride. And he said, Jesus said, perceiving, and look, this is so, reason among them, and then they say this, and show their pride right here in this next one. They feared to ask him his sayings. Then there arose reasoning among them. Which one of us will be the greatest? right from that. Then they're asking, like, who's going to be the greatest? That showed you, right there, God was proving what was in their mind. They want to be the greatest. If they saw that He was the greatest, and they, they went to Him as a little child, they would have known more. And more people would have made, they, God would have made them more great among people. And He did, because they finally... And then Jesus, perceiving the thought in their heart, took a little child... He took a little child and set him by him. And he said unto them, Whosoever shall receive this little child, name receives me. And whosoever shall receive me, receiveth him that sent me. For he that is least among you all, this, the same shall be great. So then he also says, Don't suffer the little children to come unto me. He says, If you're, if you, if you, if you don't come as this little child, little child's what? Oh, they love to, they find out new things every day and it fascinates them. Everything is wonder. Everything's new to them. But in religion, truth, we get to know everything. Yeah, we know that. It's the same thing. Oh yeah, I've heard that message before. Yeah, but why do you got all those mindsets then? Maybe you got to hear it, let it sink in, like Jesus said. Yeah, you might have heard it, but it, you haven't perceived it. It hasn't sunk in. It hasn't become flesh to you. So that's our job with one another to make whatever our breakthrough, our things in our life become flesh in our brother's life. No, don't, don't waste it on the world if they don't want to know the truth. But those that, so that's why even in us, we get drawn to the humble. If you see someone that's humble, you'll spend all day with them. You'll do all that. When someone's prideful, you're like, you don't even want it because it's Christ and you doesn't want to come out. And if you got nothing coming or bubbling up on you, you don't want to waste your time. But when Christ and you get the unction, you see when humble people or when God, you're like, there's just something that happens. Your spirit starts to go. Or people that are humble that know even more than you, but you can you get in this conversation and it's like, wow, and revelation starts flowing. Right? Why? Because you're both humble. But then you get around someone that's prideful. And you're like, then the bad thing about it, the ones that's anointed that's not, starts feeling inadequate. Like, where'd it go? I lost my vein of revelation. No, it's just God's not wasting his time. And then later, he'll get some crazy stuff in the shower or doing something. And then you'll start writing it down and he'll speak to you again. That's how it works. The kingdom of God works like that. So we got to break these mindsets. So Father God, everyone can stand up. Father, we just thank you for that we let go of every stronghold, God, every every fortress that we've hit ourselves in, God, and every one that the enemy has 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 built on our property, in our mind, God. We're not gonna let him speak. We're not gonna let him talk. We're not gonna let man's opinions bring confusion or or, or, or bring any weight against your word, Father. Father, give make us humble and teachable. And even if we don't know something, doesn't mean that it's wrong. It doesn't mean that it's right either, but not everybody's. But I'm saying by the Spirit of God, we can know more and more if we get our posture of, of, of humility. There's so many people that you run across on the internet, you see it. And there's so much that you could give them and they don't get they don't receive nothing because they know everything already. Father, let this mind be in us that's that's in you father god we bind our mind to the mind of christ father we thank you for your fire 
Father, we thank you for your confirmation of your word. Father, we thank you whatsoever a man sows, he shall reap. We thank you, Father God, when we reap, when we sow humility, we'll reap revelation. When we sow humility, we'll reap everlasting life. When we sow humility, not how religion, not false humility, not apathy, but boldness and truth. Humility to you, God, that we need to know that humility that will listen to somebody when they know more than us. Father, we thank you that you're setting us free on a daily basis, God, from glory to glory and faith to faith. Father, help this mind be in us that's also in you, God. Let this, We have the mind of Christ. Let us put on Christ. Make no provisions for our own thinking. Make no provisions of the old man. Make no provisions. Let it break every stronghold. Blow up every, every fortress that has been set up. Our old thinking, our old ways, Father God, renew us in your ways, in your thinking. Let us follow you in the narrow way, God. We we resist the proud, God. We resist everything that exalts itself above you, Father. We thank you for the mind of Christ. Everyone, just put your hands on your head and say, Father, wash me in the word. Brainwash me. Let your word brainwash me. Let your spirit be renewed in us, O God. Let this mind decrease. And let your mind increase, O God. Let nothing separate me from you, Father. Father, I submit my ways to your ways. And I ask you to forgive me for pride, for resisting the truth, for resisting your spirit, for resisting change. And I ask you to shine your light in every stronghold, every mindset, in everything that blocks my think that blocks your ways in my life. Not my will be done. Not my ways be done. But God, let it be your will and your ways for my life. I humble myself. I repent for exalting my ways, my words, above your word, above your ways. Right now, Father, Father, pour out your grace right now. Pour out wisdom. Set us free from ourselves. Our biggest enemy isn't the devil. It's our old thinking. It's our old ways. It's the worldly ways. It's the carnality. It's the old man. Father, he is crucified. It's no longer the old man that lives, but it's Christ. So, Father, we thank you that we have the mind of Christ. Father, I seal this word by the blood and the anointing of Jesus. Father, let it sink in that we are nothing without You. Let it sink in. We can do nothing without You. Let it sink in, O oh God, that we cannot go nowhere without You. Let it sink in that we have no power without You. And we receive the power to become the sons and daughters of God. The one that Made in the image. Turn up the fire, God. Pour out your glory. Strengthen our inner man as you renew our mind. In Jesus' name, amen.